Hi, I'm Sam. I'm Brandon. And we're from the Danger Planet. And today we're going to be talking to you about the Neverborn faction of Malifaux. Wild. Uh, the Neverborn are the original inhabitants of Malifaux, the people who were there hundreds and hundreds of years before the humans ever arrived. Uh, they used to look very different from how they look now, but due to a series of catastrophes, the attack of the Titans and then Titania's betrayal and eventually sealing the Titans, a lot of the Neverborn have been subject to warping magic that has changed their forms and their personalities, so they're very unrecognizable from the people they once were. But that just means they're an amazingly diverse group. They all look very different from each other. And all they have in common is that they want the humans gone. It's ours. It sure is. The first master we're going to talk about is the Dreamer. Now, he's actually not an original inhabitant of Malifaux. The Dreamer is a human boy from Earth who is an incredibly powerful lucid dreamer. And his ability to control the dreamscape uh, drew the attention of the, the tyrant Nightmare, one of the tyrants from Malifaux's past who has been living in the dream world. Now, Nightmare tried to take advantage of Dreamer's power, but Dreamer was too strong for him. And so Nightmare decided to manipulate the kid instead. So when he sleeps, the Dreamer projects into Malifaux, and it's not clear that he even knows that where he's going is a real world with real people in it. But regardless... He and Lord Chompy Bits have all kinds of amazing adventures in the dream world, which usually end pretty poorly for the Malifaux citizens involved. Absolutely. Um, so the first version of Dreamer is a very unique master. Mm -hmm. He is a summoner, so he he can pull all kinds of different nightmare creatures out of the you know the realm that they come from. He has a good amount of card and hand and deck manipulation with his lucid dream um, quick action, which is a, a quick action that's spread on most of the models in his keyword. And that lets you look at the top three cards of your um, fate deck and discard one of them uh, and have that removed from the game for uh, until the, at the very least the next turn, if not, if not longer. Yeah, streamer's ability to remove cards from the game is very unique. Very few models can do mm -hmm. that. But when a card is removed from the game, it sort of goes into like the exile zone and magic. Yeah. And certain nightmare models can pull those cards and cheat them into duels instead. So it kind of gives you a second auxiliary hand. It does. Some of your models can use. Um, and But mostly you, you'll find yourself trying to sort of remove the low cards and that way they just aren't bogging down your deck, which just drastically improves all of your flipping. Because if you just have, you know, fewer weak cards in your deck, then that's fewer weak damage flips. That's fewer misses that you'll have. And it's it's altogether a very, very powerful ability. And of course, the Dreamer comes with Lord Chompy Bits, who's extremely deadly. Yep. Um, now, the Dreamer's crew inflicts a lot of willpower duels on the enemy, and that ties into his summoning, because when he summons a model, it starts the game off the board, but when an enemy model fails a willpower duel, the model pops out right mm -hmm. next to it. And there are all kinds of different ways to take advantage of that, from the Lucid, uh, from the Alps ability to get a free attack whenever they're placed. Mm -hmm. The Insidious Madnesses have uh, an ability where they can just pulse models away from them with the Scatter ability. And there's all kinds of different things that you can take advantage of from the willpower duels that you make. They're pretty cool. And so Dreamer's title version, Dreamer Insomniac, reflects him having a little bit of a harder time getting to sleep. And as a result, having a bit more erratic powers. Yeah. Also, we, we see that he's lost the incorporeal keyword, which sort of feels like they mean that he's physically transporting himself to Malifaux, which really sort of talks about how powerful he's becoming as, as a, you know, a psyker or as, as sort of a, a person with some sort of power. Yeah. Um, so this dreamer is constantly drifting off to sleep and waking back up. Yep. And the way that's represented is he has lots of abilities that, as, as we talked about, remove cards from the game. When you have a hand of five cards removed from the game, Dreamer himself buries and you draw that hand into your hand, mm -hmm. swapping your hand out into the removed area. While that's happened, gradually those cards that are removed from the game will be put back in your discard pile. And when they're all gone, Dreamer pops back out on the board. Right. Um, so he has this amazing ability to both teleport himself around the board and also to be buried on key activations and thus be out of danger. And of course, you can sculpt this amazing hand of mm -hmm. all severes Absolutely. and then draw it. Yeah, I, I find that when I'm playing Dreamer 2, most of the time, if I've had a couple of good lucid dream activations uh, before Dreamer buries, Dreamer will bury and I'll have a hand of almost all severes. And he also has some pretty cool abilities himself. He can't summon anymore, but he can resummon Lord Chompy Bits, which yes, is can. really strong. Yeah, resummonable re totem henchmen. Yeah. Uh, very, very powerful, especially one that has a minute three attack like Lord Chompy Bits and Trail of Gore, the ability to remove scheme markers to take extra 
um, actions, whether it's walker or extra melee attacks at yeah. M3, he's, he's a scary boy. Yeah, Lord Chompy Bits is very strong. Dreamer is a really cool keyword. Nightmare is a very powerful keyword. It's often considered one of the most powerful keywords in the game, and mm -hmm. he's got two great master forms yeah. to take advantage of it. And I think also, very importantly, uh, a one, one ability that we haven't talked about, Twist Reality. Mm -hmm. um, Twist Reality is probably one of the strongest attacks in the game. It, it lets you choose whether or not you want to attack defense or willpower, which helps with Dreamer 1 summons, and it just helps with the general weaker willpower that most crews have compared to their defense mm -hmm. and it ignores armor and incorporeal and it, it really lets dreamer crews sort of get around a lot of the difficult um sort of uh, protection tech tech that that models uh in the enemy crew might have yeah and dreamer's got it chompy's got it and serena bowman's got it yes so. serena bowman one of probably one of the most important versatiles in the entire faction mm -hmm. is nightmare keyworded so we'll see her we see her a lot in dreamer crews as well as other places and that's the dreamer that's dreamer so, Brendan, who are we going to be talking about next? Uh, next up, we'll be talking about one of the Neverborn Masters that are new to 3rd edition, mm -hmm. Euripides. Or Mr. Nuts, as he's called. <laughs> Awful. Euripides is a, a Cyclops seer. Well, he's he's not a Cyclops. He's a Gigant, which mm -hmm. is the sort of overarching name for Cyclops and uh, Giants and Gurions and other big, horrible, hulking, grizzly monsters from Malifaux's Mountains. Euripides right. was originally Titania, the Queen's seer. Um, and with the return of Titania, Euripides has led his people down from the mountains. Mm -hmm. And so he is a very powerful Cyclops shaman who is able to see the future and you know, detect uh, the, the, the strings of fate. But he's also a huge beefy dude with giant fists. Yes. So uh, how does Euripides play? Well, so Euripides' crew is filled with a lot of large models. Mm -hmm. um, almost his entire crew are on 50 mil bases, and they all run around and they smash things real good. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, because Euripides and his crew are from the frigid northern mountains uh, of Malifaux, they also like to bring ice pillars to bear, which are a 30 mil marker that is height four, blocking, impassable. And destructible. And destructible. And these markers are very powerful for them. They can both use those markers as uh, locuses for some of their actions. Some actions pulse off from a marker. Mm -hmm. They can also just shove the markers around and shoulder barging them, pushing them around the board. Absolutely. And his henchman Thune can even trap somebody inside an icy prison. Yes. We, we talk a lot about Thune and henchman hardcore because of his ability to bury models inside mm -hmm. ice pillars, mm -hmm. um, which is very, very powerful in small model counts. But also at stat six, I mean, that ability is just good all around. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, because Euripides has the he's a shaman he has this ability to see the future he has intuition yep. um and a lot of his crew have this ability called the old ways which I think is supposed to simulate this sort of like old heraspexy which is seeing the future in the entrails of the dead mm -hmm. uh, a model with the old ways can if they're ever taking a duel with has no modifiers no pluses no minus twists they can choose to suffer one damage and then whatever card is on the top of their discard pile that's just the card they flip yep uh so if you have a like 13 on the top of your discard pile, take a point of damage, use the 13. Of Absolutely. course, then it gets put on the bottom of your discard pile, so you can't keep doing it. But. And and there's no restriction on jokers, uh, mm -hmm. so you can do it with the red joker if you want. So the real power from the old ways comes in when you get to cheat damage, because if you can cheat in a severe damage card, you can then turn around and for your second action, use that severe that you just cheated in, which is now at the top of your discard pile, to go ahead and hit with that on their next attack. And your which is a very strong combo. has a lot of severe fives and sixes. They do, yeah. And I mean, to be fair, they're, they're min three in a lot of cases, um, mm -hmm. if they're not min two. Um, they're just beefy boys all around yeah. really cool crew uh yeah. now euripides uh as he's called meat fist euripides old one eye mm -hmm. is his title version and he's really visceral yeah so old one eye has he's been decided to carve runes in his own skin to help him bypass the burning man's magic and as a result he now has access to rune tokens yeah now, uh, he, yeah the, so the hepatomancy tokens or the rune tokens are are given to euripides whenever anyone in his crew within 10 inches in line of sight of him suffers damage so all the time so all the time including when you use the old ways mm -hmm. and he can stack up to three of them at any given time and anyone in his crew anywhere on the board can use uh, anywhere anyone and anyone in his crew one only once per activation but anywhere within 10 of him uh, whenever they perform a duel, they can spend one of the hepatomancy tokens to look at the top two cards of their deck or the top two cards of their opponent's deck, and they can discard any non-jokers that they reveal. It's super powerful. It's, you can just look at your opponent's deck mm -hmm. and screw them. Absolutely. It's If your opponent needs to cheat against Euripides because their flips are going to be terrible. Yeah. Um, now, in trade-off for that, he's lost his power with his huge fist, although his attack is still not awful, and he now has the drink blood trigger, which lets him heal, which is pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. But he also has this really cool ranged attack, um, Etheric Gaze, which is a 2-3-5. 
but you can discard rune tokens to give the attack blasts mm -hmm. and there's a trigger that if one of those blasts hits an ice pillar marker you get to take the attack again channeling through the ice pillar marker yeah so and, you can and the trigger something. for that attack is built in it's a yeah. six mask built in so it's it's a very very strong trigger yeah you can as long as you have the rune tokens you can blast somebody from 10 inches away, mm -hmm. drop a blast onto a, an ice pillar, and then shoot another 10 inches. There's nowhere your opponent can hide from yeah. you. Uh, the other significant change is the way that he makes his ice pillars. Mm -hmm. He has now a trigger on his ice pillar ability where in addition to removing markers, which it just does natively, it, it just destroys any marker of any type within two inches of the place that you put the ice pillar. It also can then spring up a bunch of new ice pillars for every marker removed this way. Yeah. Which is, it, it's just, you can have one or two markers or your opponent can have one or two and suddenly you destroy all of their scheme markers, mm -hmm. you in, disable their scoring ability, and then suddenly have a, a field of ice pillars that are height four, blocking and passable that they're going to now have to deal with. Euripides 2 is nasty. Very, very Really strong. potent, very strong master, kind of scary to see on the other side of the board. Absolutely. That's Euripides. So the next master we're going to talk about is not exactly new this edition, but new as a master this edition, it's Nekema. Mm -hmm. uh, the Nephilim are one of the oldest Neverborn models in Malifaux. They're classic, absolutely archetypical. Nephilim are, when you think of devils, that's them. Horns, wings, big fangs, sharp claws, they drink blood, deadly, deadly creatures. Mm -hmm. And in past editions, the leader of the, of, the Nekim, of the Nephilim was Lilith, who was their queen, who's incongruously human-looking, but still deadly. Um, but Lilith's younger sister, Nekema, uh, always was chafing under her sister's rule, and at the end of second edition, she made a go at it. She overthrew her sister in a coup and took over the Nephilim. So now the Nephilim are under the command of Nekema, who is an Amazon-esque gigantic demon lady with huge horns and wings and a gigantic sword. It's actually kind of fun when you see her model. It looks like a model for a different mo game range because it's just so much bigger. It's so than much bigger. She's, she's a very large lady. Yeah, she's just like almost kind of human looking except for the horns, but she's just huge. Mm -hmm. uh, Nekama is a nasty beat stick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Nekama is probably one of the most straightforward crews in Malifaux. She has fast very, very damaging models, and she just shoots them down the board and murders anything within her path. Yeah, she just flies right at you with the Nephilim. Now, there's there's a little bit of interesting play to it because Nephilim have the ability to gain what's called grow tokens. So mm -hmm. they come in three sizes. You got Terror Tots, which are these little things, not very deadly or interesting. Young Nephilim are kind of normal size devils, got wings, got horns. Yep, the and size then, two ones, as well as also the two, um, the twin demon -y yeah, ones. Yeah, Lilu and Lily, Lilu two, and Lilu which is kind of a traditional succubus incubus thing. Mm -hmm. And then mature Nephilim are these big Hulk and monster mega demons. Um, and any Nephilim that removes a corpse marker or kills an enemy model uh, gets a grow token. Mm -hmm. And you can remove two grow tokens to upgrade to a Nephilim one size up. So Terra Tots yeah. can become young Lilu or Lilitu, and then young Lilu or Lilitu can become matures. Right. And Nekoma has a few different ways to encourage that. She has uh, some abilities that let her count her kills as somebody else's kill. Mm -hmm. The meat for the young ram trigger, which is present on not only Nekoma, but also the mature Nephilim and then several other models within the faction. And uh, she also has the ability um, to remove corpse markers uh, with her... Um, her black blood shamans mm -hmm. who can remove them to pulse out focus to friendly Nephilim. And she has her totem, which can sort of hork up a corpse marker. Right. As so as well as the new Malifo burns model, the, um, the rotting Nephilim. No, what's it not called? The noxious Nephilim. As long as well as the new Malifo burns model, the noxious Nephilim, they have the same ability to vomit up a corpse token. So she can produce these corpses, but really that gross stuff is kind of cute, but mostly what she's about is just flying up the board. Mm -hmm. She has a stat seven, three, five, six, Range two melee attack with shove aside, which lets yeah. her take a, a four inch push and another attack. She's fast. Mm -hmm. She is her crew has a lot of regeneration, and they all have black blood. Right. Which black blood says that if a uh, model it, with that rule takes damage from an attack or, or an action or ability, mm -hmm. uh, it pulses out a little one inch pulse uh, of one point of damage it's that, from from an action or trigger. Action or trigger, not ability. So not front of the card stuff, but any action, any triggers. You're right. Uh, action or trigger. It's a one-inch pulse that does one point of damage to anyone who doesn't have black blood. Models that have black blood don't take damage from it. Yeah. So you can you can hit them, but you'll be taking damage back. They're very unsubtle. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, also, um, Nekama has the frenzied, frenzied charge ability. So if that wasn't enough, she could charge three times a turn, maybe you, more. Yeah. You pretty much just have to yeah. focus her down. She's not super fragile, but she's not super hard to kill either. No. 
A, a lot of her crew doesn't, with the exception of the mature Nephilims, who you are not allowed to cheat in melee against. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of her crew doesn't have a lot of defensive technology, but what they do have is regeneration. So mm -hmm. at the start of each of their activations, they'll be healing the wounds that they've taken as long as they've managed to survive. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, Nekama's title, Nekama Broodmother, uh, takes a little bit of a backseat role, but focuses much more heavily on the growing aspect of the crew we talked about before. Yeah. Um, she can actually summon terror tots, which mm -hmm. is not something you can normally do. And she has the ability to drop corpse markers with blood has been spilled, which becomes a uh, – it's, it's, it's in shockwave action um, that – it actually does a lot. It can deal damage to enemies, pretty significant damage to enemies because mm -hmm. it increases based on the amount of Nephilim nearby and friendly Nephilim don't take damage from it and it can summon a tot. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. And of course, it is a corpse so your models can remove it and yeah. gain that growth token. And it also has some trigger for some card draw. There's a lot. The, the ability mm -hmm. has a lot of, lot of different facets. She also has uh, some really cool card draw ability. Mm -hmm. A lot of her of, of her models, um, she enables them to draw and discard so you can cycle through your hand. Now, the trade-off on that is she's not nearly as dangerous herself personally. She, uh, her, her melee attack goes down in stat. It goes down from a three, five, six to a two, four, five. It goes down from two inches to one inch. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's not quite as strong, but she's still not, you know, helpless in melee and she still does regenerate. Yeah. Um, so she has, she has a lot of really cool abilities. I think she's playing a little bit more of a subtle game. She's able, able to kind of, uh, control the battlefield a bit more. Mm -hmm. And she her her bonus action instead of being able to take a damage to ping her black blood ability she's mm -hmm. gone gained the dark bargain ability but it targets a friendly model within six inches so she can let her own nephilim uh, drop ski markers and there's a trigger to allow them to even do it while they're engaged and it's built in yep and it's an interact action not just dropping ski markers so they can interact they can kick the can yeah all kinds of stuff they can score mm -hmm. yeah so that's Nekama. she's a lot of fun and if you're new to the game and you want a crew that plays very straightforwardly mm -hmm. you could do worse absolutely. So the next master we're going to be talking about, you said that uh, Dreamer was your second favorite master. Yes. Uh, so I started Malifo mm -hmm. playing my favorite master, the fairy queen, Titania. Titania used to be the queen of all the Neverborn uh, many, many, many centuries ago. She was the one that organized the uh, building of the Kithra mechanism, which opened a portal to the realm of the Grave Spirit. And she used the energy of the Grave Spirit to kill the tyrants, which was a pretty big deal for her people. Yeah. But she also used that energy to reanimate herself as an undead and to try to bring the Grave Spirit into Malifaux, where it would have destroyed all life. Lies her, and slander. Her people stopped her from doing this and trapped her in a prison called Nithra for a thousand years. And she has recently emerged from Nithra undead and tried to regain her throne. And so she's gathered her fey, which is her keyword all around her to try to regain her power. Mm -hmm. She is at this point, the queen of the Nephilim, although, and of the Neverborn generally, mm -hmm. but not all the Neverborn answer to her, Yeah, but they all at least respect her power. They're coming around. So Titania's thing is she's all about the natural world of Malifo. So she can produce underbrush markers. Yeah. Um, most models in her crew get you get to just produce one at the start of the game mm -hmm. automatically. And then they also have an action to produce one as well. These are the 50 millimeter severe concealing markers that her models ignore, yep. but enemy models don't. And very importantly, they are not destructible. They are not destructible. So you can quite literally litter the board with forest and sort of bring things back to the natural way that it used to be. And you can, uh, Titania herself can push them around. She mm -hmm. can make attacks through them. Yep. And uh, she has a trigger on her uh, ability that generates them, uh, Germany, that she can actually teleport and place herself with. And it's actually quite a large range teleport mm -hmm. on the trigger. You can, you can place her almost nine inches away. Yeah. And yeah. uh, she's got a pretty powerful attack, mm -hmm. Awakened Hunger, yeah. uh, which does two, four, five damage and inflicts injured. Attacks yeah. that inflict injured are always good. And it has a built-in plus flip if you're within her terrain, which again, she can move around and quite literally slam into you to cause you some additional mm -hmm. damage. She's also incredibly tanky. She has yeah. a huge health pool. She has hard to wound. Uh, she has life leech, so enemy models that activate near her take damage and heal her. And yeah. she has this nasty aura called cruel disappointment. So cruel, cruel disappointment is potentially one of the strongest uh, defensive tech abilities in the game. It actually stops you from and anybody within or three of her from suffering severe damage. <clears throat> and it's one of the only things in the game that can actually prevent a red joker. Yeah. So if your opponent flips a red joker to damage something within three of her, including herself, instead of suffering severe or any other severe card, you just take moderate and there's no pluses. Yep. Which is wild severe just anything severe turns into a moderate yeah it's wild she's very hard yeah. to remove it's not impossible with her defense five but you have to really go for it yeah and i mean her entire almost her entire keyword is hard to wound so mm -hmm. you're really gonna have a tough time uh removing titania and her and her crew so titania's title form titania the autumn queen is her as her powers are starting to come back and she's really kind of rising up in her strength and she's put on a little more clothing a little bit more 
Armor well, one. I mean, okay, no, the old one's wearing clothing. It's just kind of like a, a shift. And now this right, one's got right, like right. armor and a crown. She's a little fancier. Yep. She's also managed to recover the Masamune from Victoria's. She has. Yep. The Victoria's came to try to assassinate her and failed and left the Masamune behind. So mm-hmm. Titania's got it now. Although she won't wield it because she knows that it's possessed by a bloodthirsty spirit. Of course. The This Titania's big thing is the champion upgrades. She can pick fey minions and make them her champion. And while minion is a champion, it has a few cool abilities. First, she can... Uh, channel her abilities through that the champion Mm -hmm. um the champion has suits built in to all of its attacks and the champion has companion yeah uh so you can chain your activations you can have up to two champions at once Mm -hmm. and uh when you do have a champion you at the end of during the end phase you have to discard a card or they get demoted back to regular status yeah um but you know you always have the chance to do that yeah and i i think the, the big deal about the the suits that it staples in all of her models that have a champion upgrade get a plus ram and a plus crow to every duel um and just the, the the crow is really important for Titania's crew because she has a really, really unique trigger um, that interacts with her markers that's called Into the Thorns, which in addition to doing an additional damage, anytime that you trigger it, it also allows you to place a model as long as they're within two inches of a underbrush marker anywhere in base contact with that underbrush marker, um, which is wild. It's, it's a very, very powerful and very maneuverable uh, ability and having it baked into some of your toughest models is is quite an upgrade. So this Titania is definitely quite a bit less survivable than the original. She's lost Cruel Disappointment. She's lost Life Leech. Mm-hmm. You do have to... She has armor, but... Armor 1. Armor 1. Yeah, she still, And she has hard to wound, so it's not awful, but she is still somewhat difficult to remove. Mm-hmm. Um, she's also uh, lost her extremely potent attack. She does have Bloody Command, which is a pretty powerful attack. It's a 2-3-4 at stat 7 that pushes the target around, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have quite the punch her old attacks had. No, not, not quite. Um, she's really relying on her champions to do stuff for her. Yeah, but um, but the big deal that, that this model has, uh, Titania 2, is she has an ability called Behold Her Glory. Oh my god. Now, this um, ability is so it, good. it gives out... You can only do it once per turn, but it gives out focus to a friendly minion. Um, it lets, if that minion is, uh, if if the target that you're choosing uh, is a fey uh, model, it lets it drop a ski marker within two inches of it. And more importantly, it has a trigger to draw up to uh, three cards per turn. Yeah. Um, you get to draw one card for every of your underbrush markers that's within four of the target. And, uh, you know, just... A flat draw three cards, Mm -hmm. pretty powerful. This Titania is very much about buffing her crew. She draws cards. She can hand out um, upgrades. She can clear conditions and hand out shielded. She can hand out focused. And she can injure and stun enemies to kind of debuff them and set them up Mm -hmm. for her other models to get in there and do it. But she's not quite the personal terror that the original one was. Yeah. Um, As well as having uh, the royal escort ability, which is sort of a take on Lucius. So whenever she activates, any of uh, her friendly unengaged fey within six can move up to two. And... Any of her fey minions within six of her just always get a plus one to all duels outside their activation, which means basically anytime they're attacked. Yeah. Uh, defense seven is yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Defense seven autumn nights. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. And that's ten, that's Titania. So the next master we're going to be talking about is Pandora. Yes. And as you might expect, if you're familiar with you know pop culture, she is eight feet tall and blue and comes from a beautiful planet. Yeah. <laughs> no, she uh, is has a box. So mm-hmm. it's unclear exactly who Pandora was originally, but... What Pandora really is is the vessel for the tyrant Despair, who has been trapped inside this arcane puzzle box. And so Pandora, uh, having opened the box, has released the woes inside of it, which are her keyword and her crew. And the woes basically represent spirits of like humans' negative emotions, jealousy, rage, uh, despair, any kind of fear, any of these negative emotions. Pandora plays with that. And that really, uh, her signature ability is called Misery. See, her crew is all about inflicting emotional trauma to people. And she does that with conditions. So a lot of her crew, first of all, everyone in her crew pretty much can stun enemies. And stunned is an incredibly powerful condition. Yep. Um, all of her crew also have the ability Opportunist, which says that when an enemy model has a certain condition, and they each have different conditions, although Pandora's is any condition. Yep. And uh, all of the models can always do stun, but some of them have an additional condition that they yeah. can do it on. Um, you can end that condition on the enemy to gain a plus twist to an opposed duel. Mm-hmm. Um, she also has Misery, which is that when an enemy model gains stunned or it 
uh, a, con- a, a condition listed in her opportunist ability, which is any condition, mm-hmm. um, she may either move that model two inches or have it suffer one point of damage. That's an ability a lot of her crew has, yeah. which means as you're handing out these conditions, you're either pinging the enemy or pushing them around. Yep. Now, you can only activate it regardless of how many you have um, within within the, the six-inch bubble, one time per condition gain. So mm-hmm. you can't just surround a model, stun it, and then wipe it off the board. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know e- the incremental damage that you get from a thing that is just sort of a consequence of getting a positive advantage is is wild. The damage is great. The movement is very powerful as well. Um, Pandora, all, all yeah. very good ability. Now she doesn't do that much damage outside of that. Most of her most powerful attack is self-loathing, which really makes enemies hit themselves. You actually, mm-hmm. if you succeed, they attack themselves with one of their actions. Yeah, and she even has a trigger to let them declare triggers on themselves, which is kind of funny. Um, but mostly what Pandora really is, is a master that just sort of chokes the life out of people. Yeah. She cripples them with conditions. She has activation control. She can stop enemies from activating near her and force different ones to activate instead. Mm-hmm. She can push enemies around. She can slow their own pushes so they can't get to her. Yeah. You know, trying to walk. This is me walking in slow motion, trying to get to Pandora when I can't. And, it's really a, a nasty. Lot of, a lot of her crew also have abilities that sort of interfere with uh, opponents' models, especially if they're a, 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 what we call a bubble crew, where they like to stay together to benefit from each other's abilities. We have Candy, who gets to throw around stunned and can AOE slow people. We have um, all of the the Sorrows that are her just basic minion that all have a life drain aura, where they'll damage models mm-hmm. near them when they activate. Um, there's all kinds of things that really just sort of punish you for being near and around them, especially if you can get multiple models near and around her abilities. Yeah, I'd say she's really the ultimate bubble punisher. Yeah, the anti-bubble crew. Mm-hmm. And Pandora's, uh, her, her title form, Tyrant Torn, is pretty interesting. You see, mm-hmm. uh, the Tyrant's fortune, which had split itself between two human hosts, had been ascending or attempting to ascend by infusing its power into the Crossroads Seven, yeah. which is a band of seven individuals, each of whom embodies a, one of the seven deadly sins. Their uh, box set that came out in second edition. Mm-hmm. Uh, fortune had gathered all of this power from handing out luck to different people in Malifaux or good luck and bad luck and had gathered all those people together for a big concert of the Crossroads 7. Uh, But Despair found out about this and decided to prevent the Ascension. And so it took Pandora there and Pandora and Despair interfered with the Ascension and actually killed one of Fortune's hosts and Fortune's remaining power was sucked into the box where it's trapped. Mm -hmm. So now Despair, who actually controls Pandora's body at this point, um, has two prisoners in the box. One is Pandora, or the original personality, and one is Fortune. But with um, the effort that it's putting into to keep Fortune contained, Pandora has some ability to kind of pop out and uh, influence the world again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sort of the, the cracks in her prison are widening. Absolutely. Um, and we, we see this in a number of ways. Uh, she has an ability to just cheat fate with the top card of her fate oh, deck at any really time. Um, she has a, a, a new ability called Luck Thief, which you might know from the Jacob Lynch crew, where any time an enemy model gets a positive twist to target her with anything, um, instead it is, uh, for, for her duels and damage flips, instead mm-hmm. it's just a negative. Mm-hmm. Which means it is very, very difficult um, to get any sort of leverage and damage with her. Yeah. And she also gets to draw a card at the end of every activation. Yeah. And so this this Pandora has the the interesting ability to summon woes, which the old one couldn't do. Yeah. Um, she can target an enemy model that's already stunned and summon a woe in base contact with it, including maybe the poltergeist. Yeah. Um, yep. And she, she does have a trigger where she can resummon her totem, mm-hmm. which uh, Pandora's totem, I think we didn't, we didn't mention it before, is probably one of the strongest models in her crew. Mm-hmm. It has a four-inch AoE marker removal ability called telekinesis Mm -hmm. and that is probably the biggest reason that i take pandora out of anything it's very very powerful especially in malifa burns now that we have so many different masters that are uh, like marker based crews and it sometimes doesn't matter but it sometimes really does and it does yeah and it it removes all the markers it can do up to three damage in an aoe on a Mm -hmm. willpower duel it it, it gives on a on a a move duel actually i think and then it uh it has a negative aura for uh willpower as well Mm -hmm. which is very very strong so this pandora is much more straightforward she doesn't really have the aoe punish things although she does have a cute aoe ability to change conditions around yeah she just slams you with a ranged one three four that automatically stuns you and if you're already stunned it becomes a two four five Mm -hmm. Uh, and she also has the ability to push enemy models around and then make the area near them hazardous which is nightmarish for some crews because suddenly you have this big hazardous mess in the middle of your crew and you're going to be taking a lot of one points of damage yeah so she's pretty strong uh very frustrating to play against um, I think she covers some of the weaknesses original Pandora has, which is that she's original Pandora has a very tight range in which she can really influence the game. Right. She has a hard time influencing the game outside of six inches from her mm-hmm. and new Pandora doesn't have that problem. Yeah. Yeah. New Pandora, I think is a very, very strong master. And I think that we're going to see a lot of, uh, Pandora tyrant torn um, yeah. in, in, you know, every meta. So 
we got one last master to talk about in every point. I think we can skip this one. Uh, no. No, I don't think no. we need to talk about this one. No, 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 no. I don't I think, think this master is that big a deal. Uh, oh, I think that she's quite a big deal. Who's so a big deal? Our, our last master is Zoraida. Mm -hmm. Zoraida. She's dual faction Bayou, which is why she's cool. The Bayou mm -hmm. half is what's bringing her No, around. I think it's the Neverborn. Okay. So Zoraida is the Witch of Fate. She was originally a human. In fact, she was one of the humans who came to Malifo when the breach was first opened hundreds of years ago, or a hundred years ago, let's say. Um, she, in that time, kind of went native. She has become a witch who manipulates the strings of fate, and she saw that the humans were causing terrible damage to Malifo with their, you know, thoughtless excavation of ancient ruins, freeing yeah. tyrants. Freeing all the tyrants. Mm -hmm. It's so, an all-you-can-free tyrant buffet. So she threw in with the Neverborn and helped close the breach the first time. Now it's reopened, and she still lives in Malifo, and she's basically trying to mitigate the damage as best she can. Mm. So she is the classic voodoo swamp witch. Absolutely. Uh, her, she, we've talked about Obey a bunch of times, different Obey Masters. Yeah. She is the archetypical Obey Master. And she has a yeah, stat and, seven Obey. Yeah, and it is the strongest Obey in the game um, by far with the Ensorcel trigger. Ensorcel with, is an insane trigger. Yeah, it's a trigger that you can only use once per turn, uh, but once or once per activation, I'm sorry, but uh, it lets you take a second obey action so you can double basically yeah. double obey one target once per once per activation one of the only weaknesses of obey is you can only target a given model once per activation but mm -hmm. in sorcel means that one model you target takes two actions yeah it unlocks things you can't otherwise do and her obey is so strong it's so powerful and she has the ability to channel it through any of her friendly models her keyword swamp fiend yeah. she can channel through any friendly swamp fiend any friendly swamp fiend within 12 in line of sight of her she can do any of her abilities um and uh it's very very powerful any of, its non -melee, any of her non-melee yeah. actions. And so she does have a melee attack. You know, you won't use it often. She has another ranged attack, Hex. Mostly you're here for the Obey, but you're also here for a couple of her interesting debuff abilities. Yeah. She has Poisoned Fate, which is a cool attack that means when an enemy cheats, they suffer two damage. Um, you can really, that really adds up if the enemy, it can really make a, a model's activation bad because they just can't afford to cheat. Mm -hmm. Um, and she has the ability uniquely without flipping or hitting a TN or anything, just discard both players' hands entirely and draw a full new hand of six cards, yep. which is amazing for mind games. Very, very Because powerful. your opponent can either cash out all the good cards in their hand early, in which case their hand is empty and you just don't do it then, or your opponent is holding their good cards for later and you can activate Zen activate Zoraida after you've spent your good cards and just make your opponent throw them. I've had to throw away Red Jokers to this before and it yeah. sucks. It's, it is probably one of the most powerful abilities in the entire game. Um, and uh, not that we really <laughs> love the, the dual master format, mm -hmm. but having Zoraida, even though she's 16 points base, which means 17 if you're hiring her out a keyword as a second master, to just refill your hand in any Bayou or any um, Neverborn crew, is amazingly powerful. Yeah. And she also um, has a really interesting totem. She oh, doesn't yeah. hire her totem, mm -hmm. but she can, at the end of her turn, discard a card, or end of her activation, discard a card to attach a voodoo doll to an enemy model. And while the, the doll is attached, um, anytime the doll takes damage, the target takes one damage. And anytime the doll gains a condition, the target gains that condition. So you can hand yeah. out stunned, you can hand out all injured, you can hand out any kind of ability that her crew can hand out to mm -hmm. your totem. And then put it on that target as well. Yeah. And she also uh, can cash in the totem to draw a card. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's hard to remove. In order to get rid of the, the totem's upgrade, you basically have to either kill the totem, which damages your own model, or discard three cards. At, at when the model that is... Uh, voodooed activates. Yes, so it's tough. Um, in addition, the, because the totem is a construct, when the totem dies, it drops scrap, mm -hmm. which and, and, which is a great way to generate scrap. I love hiring uh, either Vasilisa, the, uh, the Neverborn Versatile, or Widow Weaver out of keyword to start making puppets because Zoraida loves her puppets, voodoo or otherwise. Uh, so moving on to her title version, Zoraida Swamp Witch, Ooh. or Swamp Hag. The Swamp Hag is a little bit more finicky than the original version. Mm -hmm. um, she's lost Obey. That's her big thing. Yeah. Um, but she has this really interesting ability that when she takes an action, she can discard up to two cards mm -hmm. once per turn, yep. and two other friendly models can take that same action as long as it's a yeah. general action. So a non charge, non -charge general non -charge action. action. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but that means you can have three models concentrate at once, or three models walk at once, or three models interact at once, which yeah. is really strong. Very, very powerful, um, es especially with all of her, you know, and she has a number of very fast, very agile Swamp Fiend models that have things like leap and things like ambush, and she can, you know, run her crew out and then kick all three markers over to the other opponent's side of the board all at once. She can also, um, once she has an enemy stunned, if that condition would end on that target, she can mm -hmm. discard a card so it doesn't. Right. And that goes really well with her melee attack, which stuns people. Yeah. Um, 
Air, it's actually not, it's not even a melee attack. It's a range eight. For some it's reason, a range eight. Yeah. It's a range eight stacks stat six and willpower. It also has a very amusing variant on execute <laughs> yes. where it's basically just execute. But if they actually died to the execute, which is mm -hmm. unusual, you replace them with a gups because she guppified them. Yes. That baby um, Silurid. I, I don't know that that has ever happened or will ever happen, but, but I someday. would love to see it someday. Yeah. Uh, she has a very interesting bonus action, which is brew lets her take, pick a swamp fiend and increase all of its stats by one, yep. which is bizarre because when it, when I mean when I say all of its stats, I mean all of its stats. So defense yeah. and willpower go up, attacks go up, its movement goes up, its size goes up. Yes, it you does. You can have up to a size. If you're playing in Bayou, you can have up to a size six bad juju. Yeah, wild. There's no actual benefit to doing that except that you can see over height five buildings, which is kind of amusing. Uh, but it's cute. Um, but the other thing that she does, lost knowledge. It's Ooh, an ability a couple knowledge. a couple models in this game have. It's remove mm -hmm. a marker, draw two cards, which is good because as we've mentioned, a lot of her abilities require you to discard multiple cards. Yeah. So you need to keep your hand full. But, but her lost knowledge has two insane triggers. Yeah. I think I I really like lost effigy. I mean, it's not good. Let's be let's be real. Lost effigy um, is you name a puppet and you summon it. Yeah. Instead, so instead of drawing the cards, you can summon the named model, any puppet that costs four or less which has a couple of things that you can do. You can you can summon her totem with it, I guess. You can, more importantly, summon the Wicked Dolls, which are very, very good. Or you can summon any of the effigy models. I think summoning her totem, the big thing there is that you then stun her totem mm. and attach, you know, put the stunned on the enemy model. And I suppose. Keep them permanently stunned. Yeah, but... Um, but, but her but other I mean, trigger. Yeah, her, her other, other trigger, trigger is th That's bombers. the money. That's her the other money. trigger, Seal Fate, is choose um, an enemy model anywhere on the board... Doesn't matter if you have line of sight, doesn't matter range, they have nothing they can do to interact with it, and yeah. you'd say that model activates next. Yeah, it just has to not have activated yet, yep. and that is it. That is insane. There, there are some crews hmm. that just instantly lose yeah. to that trigger. Absolutely, yeah. It is an insanely powerful ability, and you know, coming from a master that e even in her, her non Malifo Burns ability has such an impactful mm -hmm. action in, in, the, in the hand pitch thing, but Seal Fate is out of this world it's it yeah. not, not not always effective i will say there are definitely situations where it's not really useful but oh boy i mean even just the ability to make your opponent do what they don't want to do mm -hmm. um yeah, there are some crews though that really require a lot of setup and yeah. if you're forcing them to activate uh just for example you've got crews like maxine too who yep. really wants to fling maxine into the center of the board if you seal her fate while she's still in her deployment zone her activation that turn is going to be pretty marginal yeah uh lord cooper and shamus both have these big guns that you really want to set up the ability to get out there and shoot someone absolutely if you make them activate before anyone's in range you can waste one of their all-powerful shots mm -hmm. um you've got and it's not even necessarily masters. Yep. There are some models that just really want to activate early in their crew to set things up. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you're playing against McCabe, um, you can make McCabe activate before there's any scrap on the ground and he doesn't get to make an artifact. Or uh, if there's an enemy model that they're maybe trying to save for later, like if you have a read that this is their claim jump model and they're going to try to run it in at the end of the turn, you can activate it now and they basically have to either go for it or give up the point that turn. Mm -hmm. That ability is crazy. Yeah. I, I think it might be the strongest. <laughs> I mean, I've said that probably three times now, but... Everyone's got uh, strong triggers. Very, very strong ability. Yeah. So I really like the Zoraida. She's less straightforwardly powerful than the original, mm -hmm. but I think she's got some fun play to her. Absolutely. And she also encourages in keyword play because of the way um, her or a witch's brew buffs swamp fiends. There are yep. some swamp fiend models that you maybe wouldn't be super enthusiastic to take, but at plus one stat on everything, they're pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I mean, I just got to say, I, I think that her key, her keyword is, is very large. It's, I think it's, if not the, it's, it's, it's one the of the largest keywords in the game. It's the biggest um, keyword because at, when they changed editions, there was a bunch of like sort of miscellaneous crap in the Bayou and Neverborn factions mm -hmm. that didn't really go with a master and all that stuff got swept into swamp fiend. Yeah. And I mean, she has, she has uh, access to zips henchmen, uh, the first mate, <laughs> she has access to the best. Bad, uh, bad juju. Um, she has access to Silurids, uh, Gops, uh, Spawn Mother, McTavish, McTavish, uh, the Bayou Gators, who are, are really, really like very, very powerful models. Yeah. Um, there's All so, so many things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Zoraida is a great master. She's not a very perhaps new player friendly master. She does take quite a bit of knowledge, uh, but I, I think she's a great way to learn the game because she gives you access to so many different different uh, strategies. She really does. Yeah. And that's the Neverborn. Neverborn. We did it. We did it. We hope you uh, found this video interesting and informative. It's been a lot of fun making this video for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you can check the link in the description and you can see the column that goes with this video on goonhammer.com. Absolutely. You can also find our Discord, which we'd encourage you to join to talk about these and other masters or other games. We talk about all kinds of games. We talk about Moonstone in that yeah, Discord. We do. We talk about things. And uh, sometimes we make uh, Malifaux boards out of cake. We do do that. Well, we've done that once, but we'll probably do it again. Absolutely. Anyways, 
This is a great video. Mm-hmm. We enjoy talking to you. And until next time, this is Sam signing off. And Brandon. How do you make beaver sauce, you ask? I didn't. Beavers. Cool. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, but sometimes friends stab friends. All right, go sit down. I want to make sure that. I'll stab my friends. I do. I have given up, Doug. Good. Does green mean it's recording? No. It actually means it's not recording. Red means it's recording. But now it's recording. Now it's recording. I'll record. Do you want to to check audio? Please don't do any Vulcan things to me. I need him to not be dead, but. Don't oh. do any Vulcan stuff to me. All right. Um, one time I was eating llama steaks and uh, then I died. So we are going to be talking about Zoraida today. Good. I'm going to eat some Zoraida bagels. First, we'll be discussing Zoraida. And by that I mean, I don't know. That's fine. Zoraida or Zoraida. Who, who are we talking about first? Okay, no, we're not. I'm cutting that out. We're not no, we're not. No. We're, no, that has to be in the line. Well, it's funny that I'm the editor. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. No, we're not. We're not talking. So, so all you can free Tyrant Buffet. Cool. Punch it. Okay. Oh, that was good. Dude, Zoraida. Holy shit. Yeah. What that, fucking... Remember, I was saying that trigger was nuts from day one.